Hi there, Rod Camp here from Jetboard Australia. Welcome to our workshop slash showroom. Uh, I've got a lovely little workshop set up at the back of my showroom here that I can do all the work on all the uh, motorized surfboards, jet boards. So the little job we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you how to remove the engine and exhaust from a late model DFI board. It's very similar to the earlier boards as well, but we'll go through this DFI model. So basically what we're gonna do is go through the process of how to remove the engine, tools you'll need, and then we'll, uh, we'll pop it back in again and uh, show you how that all goes together. Uh, a couple of little special tools, I'll run through those in a minute, but uh, basically, uh, let's get started and uh, pull this motor out. So, simply engine cover off, pretty straightforward, as you would do any time. So it comes out, we'll put that aside over there. First thing to do, obviously, is remove the fuel tank. Okay, let's get into it. So uh, let's get the fuel tank out and get started. So really simple with the fuel tank. There is a Velcro strap, easily removed. Just undo it like that. You've got a fuel line connector here. Just a little press button on the inside of the fuel line connector here. And then down below, you have a fuel pump uh, wire there, and you just unclip it there. Those have got a tiny little clip, you catch a nail on there. Very easy to remove. So whip that out. Then from there, easiest thing is grab that hose. That hose does get in the way, so the tank comes out. Then at the very rear, you have the breather tube. Just simply undo the breather tube by pulling the fitting uh, towards the tank and slide that out. Tank's out, piece of cake. Get that out of the way there. So next thing from there, obviously we start to remove this engine. So what we need, uh, it's quite tight under either side of the engine compartment there, and there's two ways to unbolt it. There's some um, nuts and then some Allen key heads. I find the Allen key heads are the easiest to get to to uh, get these motors out. So what I'm going to do, I have here just a basic four millimeter uh, socket head Allen key and an extension with the pivot on it. That makes it easier to get in at the, at the weird angles to get into. And then of course, a very small uh, quarter drive ratchet. Very, very simple. So from there, what we'll do, we'll start with this one up in here. Get into the Allen key. And we'll just start to undo that. Screw and a nice big washer. I'll put that aside for later. All right, we'll do the other end up in here. On there. That's got it. Also, while we're here, we'll remove the spark plug. Makes it easier to get into. You've got to remove the spark plug to get the engine out anyway. Uh, it's a bit of a tight, tight fit, but with the right bits and pieces removed, it's all good. So that's the spark plug retainer. Just whip that off. And then, of course, two fingers, they're very tight. Push that spark plug cap off and out of the way. So while we're in there, we'll get into that second side. And this is where I use the long extension with the, the swivel head. And that allows me to get to that Allen key on the far side there. So we'll put that into there. Like that. And as you can see, it puts you in a great position to undo that Allen key. So we'll just use the genuine JetServe spark plug tool. Remove the spark plug. Give it a tap. And this this time's a good time to inspect the spark plug. So that's burning really nicely. You'll always get it darker around here, being a two-stroke, uh, and you can see that uh, it's a little dark on the center, but that one's okay. If you're going to do this sort of job, always pay to put a new spark plug in anyway. So we'll replace that regardless. Okay, so we've just got one more engine mount at the back here to do. Now this particular board has my special, uh, what I call intake sock. So we'll just remove that to get to the engine mount. So what this intake sock is, it's a little cover for the intake. Jet surfs have the cover for the intake wide open. This particular cover is designed to stop water and splash getting into the engine, especially for surf riding, is what we guys do here in Australia. So it's a little cover I make up, put that there. And 
then we'll get that last engine mount undone here. Okay, that's the four engine mounts removed. So obviously from there, you need to remove all the little extras that are on the motor. So uh, throttle position sensor here, just a simple clip. Just unclip it there, that undoes. You've got the fuel injector on this end. Again, just a press clip on that one. That one comes out of the way. You'll have to remove the cooling lines. So that's very simple. They're just a, a push snap connector. So you pull that ring back, the tube comes off and then we'll remove the tube to the exhaust. Just a set of side cutters there. Nip that off. Now just make sure nothing ends up in these engine compartments because they can end up in the engine, believe it or not. So I always make sure that whatever I pull out, I um, take out the engine compartment. So that tube just comes off there. That's quite simple. What we'll do next, we'll remove these exhaust springs while we're doing the exhaust. I just use a long, long nose pair of pliers and just simply get in behind there. There's a fair bit of load on it, unclip it, and then the spring comes off. Same the other side. Yeah, tight little buggers. And there you go, that one's off as well. Cool. In the center there's just O-ring, so that will just slide off once we get to that point. So next thing there, we've got to get into the throttle cable and that arrangement in there. So um, this front cable, bracket has actually got to come off so what we'll do we'll remove that um, but I do see we just should just undo the starter motor wires and bits and bobs at the back here first it's an earth lead there we'll remove that earth lead now this is a 2.5 mil allen key so I'll just simply undo that there all right cool now there's a couple of plugs down here one for the timing sensor, which again, one of those little clips, just simply with your fingernail, just on the clip, pops undone there. Then is the starter motor one. That one's a little bit harder to get to, but then same clip arrangement and unplugs like that. So again, same clip there. It's a little O-ring that hold them together. So we just keep that together like that. So they're disconnected, ready to go. So the next thing I'll see, this engine cradle, as I said, has to come out of the way. So again, we use our same four mil Allen key, and we undo the two front engine mounts to remove that cradle. Another one under the, the high pressure fuel hose there for the engine fuel injector. Loose that out. So, we'll just disconnect the throttle cable here as well. And that will be a little larger Allen key here. There. And just undo that. And that'll allow that throttle cable to come undone and out of the way. Just slip that fuel line off there and that whole engine mount bracket will snake its way out through there so that's what it is there put that there there are two little collars two of these sleeves they're actually different those sleeves i think yeah one has got a bigger flange on it the bigger flange one goes on the end where the uh, fuel injection cable is so keep in mind that when you put it back together so that's all there. So I think we're pretty right. Uh, one more tube there for the cooling. Snip that off. And again, make sure that cable tie doesn't end up in the engine bay. That little fella will pull off. Now what we're going to do now, you've got the engine and the coupling, uh, sorry, the exhaust and the coupling that needs to come undone. So that's just o-rings here on the exhaust side so just give that a reel and the coupling again as you see just pops out so it's just a three-legged coupling arrangement there are some little white uh cush drives in there just be careful that all stays in place if it does great it can stay there like that so now what we do we've got to remove the throttle cable so just tip the engine on its side 
and just let me slide the toggle cable out of there. And then that's it. The engine will very carefully come out of the engine compartment. And there it is. Job's done. Okay, next we're going to do is remove the exhaust. So to remove the exhaust, we need to remove the silencer at the rear here. So that's really simple. Um, 3.5 millimeter Allen key. There's a Allen key screw in there, which we'll undo. Just till it's loose. And then that little silencer just pulls off. So it has O-rings here and here. It just sits in a place. And just watch the... Uh, Watch the screw, it has a brass um, washer on it, so just be careful you don't lose that. So that's out of the way. Then from there, it's pretty simple. This retainer has to come off because the, the little valve arrangement, and this is your exhaust valve if you haven't seen it before. So what it is, is a, an end cap with an eccentric on it. So you can find the position between the exhaust valve and the inlet into the um, jet pump cavity. So we'll show you how to do that, uh, adjust that when we put it together. So that comes out, and then there's the, the little ball, which is there. And when you've got to inspect those too. If they've been overheated, you'll find there'll be grooves in it, they'll be melted, they'll be out of shape. And also there's a little seal up inside there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little lip seal in there. Again, check that for any um, problems with uh, wear or the seal falling apart or popping out, corrosion. And then the housing, the housing is plastic. It's designed to melt if you have an overheating problem. So uh, if it's out of shape, distorted, we'll replace it at the same time. So that's how you get into there. And that allows this particular section of the exhaust to slide back through into the board. And that's why we've got to remove that flange. So that's what that's all about. Very simple. Okay, now that the silence has been removed, it's a simple uh, matter of pulling the exhaust through. So there's a big O-ring on the rear of the exhaust. So what we need to do is just give it a bit of a wriggle and get it to come loose and that seems to be loose there that's it and she pops through and the exhaust comes out and there you can see that's the end we had at the back and that's the exhaust system there out and ready to go so the things to expect when you look at the exhaust system have a look at all the o-rings make sure they're in place make sure that this here the silencer hasn't melted as i said if the exhaust gets hot that will melt um, so they're, they're sort of sacrificial uh, then from there give it a rattle some of the early boards have a aluminium center in them which corrode and fall apart these newer ones have a stainless steel center i don't know if you can see that uh, they last a lot better the other thing to look at too is around the joints make sure there's no sign of corrosion and leaking and then also look at the color of the pipe see how that's a nice black uh, pipes that have had overheating will actually turn a real chocolate brown so if you see a chocolate brown have a good look through it um, and also I suggest to blow compressed air back through the cooling line, which is that one there, because uh, if it has had an overheat, uh, that is a sign that uh, the exhaust system, uh, or sort of the exhaust and engine cooling system is blocked. So give that a blow back through there. So that's how it all comes out, easy as that. The other thing I often check too, and I'll put that out of the way for now, is the drive line. While you've got the engine out, the best thing to do is just give it a spin, make sure it's smooth, there's no in play in it, and that tells you that the drive line bearings and jet pump bearings are in good condition uh, and always a good check. And also inside here is your little, uh, and I won't take that right off because they'll spring out and it'll be hard to put back, but are your little cush drives. So check your little cush drives in there as well. Um, they do wear over time. So that's it, ready to go. Okay, well that's all out. What we generally do then is we give the engine compartment a bit of a wipe down. This is a relatively new board, so it's lovely and clean. Really important, if the, the engine compartments are full of sand and junk, give it a wash out because any sand and junk is going to end up inside the engine intake and in through the motor. And I've seen many motors full of dents and scratches and whatnot through the cylinders. So this one's great, but if you've got a board that's full of crud, uh, rust and sand and garbage, give it a good clean out before you put it all back together again. So then from there, right, we're going to put this new exhaust in. So a couple of things we'll need. I use a Lanox spray, it's a great lubricant and protectant, so I use that on the exhaust. So this is the new exhaust we're fitting. So this is actually the newer exhaust with the, the silencer and the soundproofing on the chamber itself. You would have seen it's different to the one we just pulled out. So this customer wants one quieter, so we're going to do the, the uh, conversion for him. So easiest thing to do is give it a bit of a 
bit of a lube up around there because that makes it easy to slide in. And again, around the valve at the back. So, there's a big cavity in here. We stick it in there. Now this exhaust does go a certain direction too, so you've got to get it the right way in. So you want it, so the exhaust tube and the clips are in that sort of direction with the MSR symbol, or depending on the pipe, the jet surf symbol at the top. So that slides in. Then what we've got to do at the back is align, and I just use my finger, align the valve and give that a wriggle. That goes in there. Just make sure that throttle cable is out of the way. It doesn't do it any harm. I'm going to wrap it up here in the tank strap just to keep it out of the way. So that big O-ring we lubricated, it's got to slide in. So you can feel that. It felt to me like that slid in. And that MSR symbol is at the top. And then the little valve at the back that is in position there. Probably come back a little bit further, but that'll do for now. So that's the basics of getting the pipe in. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this little valve back into the board. It's gotta come back a couple of millimeters. It's gotta be flush for the end of the board so the little silencer fitting can sit there nice and neatly. So I've got a special screwdriver, little hook in the end, and we just hook it into there and very gently pull this back. Okay, and what I'll do, I'll just slip through here. I'll just make sure the pipe is home on this end because that will make a difference. Don't come there she goes. Now she's in. Beautiful. So what it was there, the O-ring was catching on that end and it pushed through and that's the way it is there now. So what we do from there, while we've got that in place, wipe my grubby hands off as we unscrew the little valve cap. Tap. Unscrews. Here we are. Ball and spring comes out. And then we'll just move closer to the bench here. So what we've got here is that's just a safety cap that I have on it when they come new. So I'm just removing that. So we're going to put the original eccentric one back in place. So ball and spring, just make sure the ball doesn't get caught down in amongst the spring like that what happens is then it doesn't close properly so whoops <laughs> so just make sure the ball on springs like that sometimes I even get the spring and I give it a bit of a tweak and that sits there better so pop that in there then we get the original end cap which I'll put some spray on it That just screws into there. Very fine thread, so just make sure you get it right and it doesn't cross thread. That screws in. Do that nice and tight. Cool. Might just tap that so it's up hard against the board. Then you get the eccentric, and it has a little O-ring with it too. So the little O-ring sits. Get it in position. The little O-ring sits in there. Like that, the spray, and the eccentric sits in. So the, the indent is inwards, and the cavity for the silencer sits outwards, and that neatly sits into that cavity there. And then the end cap, which again, a little bit of spray, that screws on. That. But don't do up that, that screw because the eccentric's got to turn so that we can line this all up. So not every board's the same, it's obviously handmade carbon fiber. So to take up the differences between there and there, they, uh, they use the eccentric. So obviously then use your silencer. Again, two arrow rings on it, one there. And one there. So it goes into there. And what we'll do We'll turn this eccentric around until, there you go, it all lines up. That. That's it, now it all lines up properly. We won't tighten that up 100%. Then the Allen key and screw. That goes in there. You could lock tight it if you wanted to. I find if you just do it up nicely. There's no need. And again, just 
lock that up, not too tight, and then tighten that ring on the eccentric once it's all in place. And that's it, that ends back together. I get rid of my grubby handprints, and that ends sorted. Job's done. Okay, let's pop this engine back in. Again, we talked about making sure the engine compartment is nice and clean, which this one is, it's lovely. No dirt, grit, that sort of stuff. And then we've got our power plant here. We'll get those cables out of the way. And there's a bit of a, a bit of a squeeze to get it in, but it goes in there. Put it in position. So the first thing we do is we do the throttle cable. So just turn this engine on its side and the engine compartment there. Throttle cable's there. It's just got a little, little ball and a slot arrangement, very similar to motorcycle stuff. And that sits in there like that. Now it, it's got to sit down in behind there. So when you put it together and you get the, the spacer, and we talked about earlier, there's two different spacers. There's the one with the big ring, the one with the small ring. The ring's all about holding the cable. So when we reassemble, making sure that cable is in behind there. There's a little tab you see here that keeps the cable out of the gear. So that locks that all down in position there and the cable there and it'll follow through into onto the, the bracket. So just make sure that's right. There's nothing worse than putting the engine in and then the cable's wrong and you gotta start all over again. So cable's in place there now. So then from there, we'll get our trusty spray again. We'll spray the O-rings and a little in the exhaust and then on the, the coupler. And you can check the engine now. While we're there, we can just talk about that. See how the engine turns quite happily that way? That's the one-way bearing on the starter clutch allowing you to do that. And then you turn the other way, it gets tight. And that's actually turning the starter gear and starter motor. So that's showing me that that starter clutch assembly is working correctly. And in another video, we'll go through how that is uh, pulled apart, cleaned, replaced, all that sort of stuff. But anyway, it's engine stuff today. So cables out of the way. We've got to line up a couple of things here, making sure the tubes and whatnot are out of the way. I'll set that up on there. So we've got to line up the drive coupling. So it's a three leg coupling. So you just turn that and locate it. And then of course, then we've got to line up the exhaust. And then what we want to make sure too is the exhaust when you fitted it, that the two tabs for the exhaust springs are lining up with the tabs on the motor, which it is. And that was all about the MSR being at the top. So this all lines up. So that looks good. So then from there, it's a matter of wriggling it into place. It takes a little bit of pushing. in nice so what I do then is I start to reassemble anything I'll put the exhaust fittings on last when it's all in place it just makes it easier there uh, we can put the cooling line in here so that just slides in that's one of those quick release fittings push it forward slide in and just to make sure it, it, it stays there it's locked in place then the new exhaust has the new tube on it which will stick in there and we'll leave that one and we'll do that one. Oh, we might as well do them now, I guess. We'll put that one on there and we'll get a couple of cable ties. We'll zip them on. Got some little ones here. Ones that I didn't prepare earlier. And there they are. Just use the small ones, that's all you need. There's not a lot of pressure in this. It's just mainly to stop it working its way off at vibration. That. and then one for the telltale this cooling line goes to the telltale here it's just a, an indicator the engine is working correctly and it also helps the flow through the cylinder head it bleeds some water out of this end rather than the other end cool I'll snip them off lovely all right so we'll get the engine cradle that's it there there is a trick to doing this, there it is. It's all about getting the angle of the dangle right. So when you put it in place, make sure you get it the right way around, of course. You wanna have the notch for the fuel injection hose towards the throttle body, so this end, and the kink that way. So that sits in there. We'll get that fuel injection hose out of the way. So on top like that. Okay, so. This end is your fuel injection hose uh, clip. And then, uh, as we talked about, 
the spacer with a flange to hold the throttle cable in place. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so we've got that all in position there now. And then we're going to go down under the engine here, keeping the throttle cable in position. It's sitting there nicely. And then we'll feel for the thread there, making sure the tab for the fuel injection hose clamp stays in place. Start screwing that in. All right, we won't get too carried away because we're going to do the other end. So this one's the one without the flange. And obviously the spigot end goes to the arm, which is down here. This goes onto the cylinder head end, so it's a little easier to get into. Put the bolts in there. And just to make life easier, we'll use the normal nose pliers to help me hold it. Slide the bolt in, like that. And then my special Allen key tool. This one's a bit easier, you can see this one. Can line that up. And get that started. Feel the thread starting there. That's good. Then I get a quarter drive ratchet. We're just making sure that throttle cable is in the right position for later on too. And that's that's there, it's sitting on top, sitting on top of there. It's in its little brackets down in there. That's good as gold. Don't have to be super tight. Cool, that's in place. So we can pop the fuel injection line back on its clip. So it's just a little rubber that slides over like that. There's no problem there. So that's good. That's all in place. We'll start to put the um, the engine bolts back in now. So our engine bolts, M6 thread, five mil Allen key. The trick is get it into the engine bracket there. Lift the engine, align up the thread. And boom, that one's in. We don't tighten it yet. It's the old story. Never tighten any bolts until everything's in place. That's got me in trouble many times. The other one in the back here. Okay, with a little wriggly joint in it, and that'll help me get it down into position there. Okay, so I'm just going to use my Allen key tool. Get that into there. in engines in beautiful all right let's hook up all the ancillaries so throttle position sensor just matter it's pushing it back into place uh, we'll also we'll do the throttle cable wire down this end while we're thinking of that so when you put the throttle cable in you can see the groove for the cable and the screw so a little tip with these two to not to over tighten them. I have found if they're over tightened, it actually squashes the cable and makes the throttle stiff. So be careful as far as doing these up. Get that squared up. That's in place. Just firm. And then we'll do a double check here. I've got the throttle and yeah, see it's returning nicely. That's great. Perfect. All right. Then from there, we'll do, we'll do the starter motor and 
the timing sensor. Do the starter motor first, because it's at the back. And make sure you hear the click. You can hear that click there. I'll be quiet while we do this one, so make sure you hear the click. Like that. And then just give them a tug, make sure they're there. And while we're here, we won't forget the earth lead. This goes back through that O-ring there. Under there. Okay, little earth root screw, and these are fiddly little fellas. Tiny little screw. Slip it into the cable there. Use the cable to steady it. And then line it up. There you go, beautiful. And I like to hold the cables in position when you tighten them because they always move. There you go, again, not too tight. All right, so then we will have fuel injector. Again, wait for the clip. Put the cover over it. Just there. Just be careful you don't pull that too far too, because the end of that uh, sheave comes out and it gets all furry and out of out of, out of place. It looks terrible. So just be careful on that. All right, that's all that there. I think what we'll do, we'll put the spark plug in. Okay, spark plug. It's a bit fiddly, but you can get it in there. I'll give you a lot of room, but enough. Okay, and the jet surf tool. Which you can use any spark plug spanner, but this jet surf tool is just the right angle of the dangle, makes it great. So, not too tight there again. That can go on. We'll do the spark plug cap and the, uh, the cover from the other side. Next thing we'll do is these exhaust springs. These can be a bit of a can be a bit of a trial. They can be a bit fiddly. So patience and perseverance with these. So there. And what I find is you get the along those pliers hooked in behind it with enough room to get the clip in. Boom, it's easy as that. Not always. <laughs> the bottom one will be a bit more fiddly as well, so I'll get that one in place. These springs are both the same, so it doesn't matter which side they go on. So it's all about setup when you put these on. So I've got that set so it's at the right angle to go on. There you go. Boom. Lovely. That actually pivots, you can get that in position there. We're getting close. So basically now we'll put the spark plug cap and boot on. Spark plug cap's down here. Just make sure that there's no, no oil or, or grease on this. You want to have the spark plug cap dry. And you especially don't want to have salt water all over it. It can create a, a spark. So that's on. And then the little cap, obviously that's at the top. That goes around the, the, uh, the nut on the spark plug. It's in place there like that. Boom, so push it in from both ends. Lovely. So we'll stick our little filter stock on. As I said, this is my invention. This is not a jet surf um, piece. So basically what I've used is, that's the exhaust spring that I've hand molded to suit inside there, which originally started off as an exhaust spring that you'd see in the check valve at the rear. And then these I have handmade by our guy locally. So basically the idea is to stop splash. As you can see, the intake on these is wide open. So that just simply slips down in there. It's a cone shape, so it fits in between everything down there. Slide that on. Get your Allen key. Uh, sorry, get your cable tie. I give it a bit of a twist up to give you a helping hand to get it around the corner. Cool. Now when you put these on, on the end of the throttle body, there's two little grooves. So you want to try and get the cable to in between the two grooves, and you want to position the uh, intake sock in the upward position. It sounds silly, but all your splash comes from the bottom, uh, and if you're going to get that much splash, it's going to go in there. You're in trouble anyway, so that's why I set them that way. That's there. Get that off. Alrighty. I think we're ready to put the fuel tank back in. So let's get the tank. So they're really simple. 
So sit the tank there, find the breather tube. They're pretty straightforward. Just push them in. Pull the little ring back, that'll help you. And that locked in place like that. Now the other trick you've got to be careful of, the back strap, you can imagine if you get the strap caught between there and there, it's going to kink it. So what I do is I make sure that the, the breather tube is behind the back strap there, out of the way. And make sure that the front strap is against the motor so when you put the, the tank in, it doesn't get in the way. You'll notice here this little rubber knob. That's designed to sit in a cavity in the tank and that sort of holds in position. So that's what you're looking for. So strap like that, get the tank in a vertical position. It's got to guess its way down and through everything in there. And then with a bit of a wriggle, boom, it sits on that rubber knob. And that allows you to put it back together. So, man, Velcro strap. Straight forward. Cool. So, when you're putting the fuel tank back in, put the fuel pump wire on first. The reason being it's at the bottom. If you do it the other way around, it just gets in the way. So, again, wait for the snap. Again, the fuel injection line, boom, snapped in. I think that's about it. So what we need to do now is give it a little test. So I'll, uh, I'll grab a lanyard and we'll just crank it up, give it a quick fire, make sure everything's sweet and that's good to go. Stop it there. Okay, engine's back in, exhaust is all set. Um, everything's tight, fixtures, fittings, everything's in place, fill the socks on. So let's give it a try. So obviously, if, if you're a jet surfer, you'll know. Insert the lanyard the first time. Fires up the ECU, initializes the board ready to go. Lights flashing green, that means it's good to go. So I'll put this in for the next, next set and uh, within three seconds, it will fire up. So we'll just quickly put it in. One, two, three. That's it, runs, that's a bonus. Okay, and then to turn the board off, board off we can either let it time out and that green light will flash and the bilge pump will run for about three to five minutes or we can just put the key into the uh, LED there and that turns the board off. Okay, so these are the tools you'll need. So starting from here, pointy nose pliers, a standard set of side cutters. Uh, this is a five mil uh, Allen key and then I have a custom made one which is a little longer. Jet surf, spark plug spanner, so small cable ties, a nice quarter drive extension with the, the sort of knuckle joint on it, which is flexible, a 2.5 Allen key and a 3.5 Allen key, and of course, my Lanox spray. And that's about all you need. Nothing too special. Nice and easy. Thanks, guys. And we're going to do some more videos like this uh, on a whole bunch of different things in the future. And uh, we'll give you some insight of what these boards are all about. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Bye now.